All right, hello. Welcome to something a little different. This is going to be just like a basic overview of the mechanics of Hades, the latest game from Supergiant, game the studio that made Bastion, Transistor, and Pyre. I've been playing a lot of this game on my stream, and I've had a pretty common question that I've been asked, be like, hey, Got any tips for me? How can I improve? And I was like, you know what? I'll turn this into a YouTube video. I got some ideas about this. So here we are. Uh, this is going to be structured a little differently if you're watching this and you've seen some of my, my last guide series for Retropolis. I'm probably going to structure this into just like separate recordings that I'm going to have footage over because I'm going to talk about a lot of different mechanics in this. Uh, hopefully... Uh, not hopefully. I will have the mechanics. It's going to be broken up. I'll give you a little overview. Hopefully on the screen alongside this is like what's going to be talked about in this video as well as in the description. There should be timestamps to everything for this to be easy. I'm going to try and keep this around 20 minutes, but we'll see. Uh, so first thing I'm going to talk about uh, is like introduction stuff we're going to talk about this was the introduction and i'm going to talk about the meta stuff which is the contractor unlocks the unlocks at the mirror and the weapon unlocks the other thing that i wanted to preface this with before we get into it here is that i'm going they're going to be mechanic spoilers if you're trying to keep yourself completely spoiler free i am going to be talking about all of the bosses all of the weapons and what you can like uh, unlocks for the weapons that you may not know about as well as weapons you may not know about yet if you're starting fresh so if you don't want any spoilers for things like that i recommend not watching this video until you've unlocked everything without any further ado let's begin all right on the meta side of this guide i'm going to start here at the broker uh because i'm going to go through all the currencies that they that you can see Starting with the gems, which are the very lowest level of meta currency. You use these to get basic level uh, upgrades from the contractor. Next up is keys. Keys are used to unlock weapons and mirror upgrades. Nectar, which is used to give to friends to progress your relationship with them and progress the story. Uh, the first nectar you give to each character gives you a trinket, except for... Hades. Hades gives you nothing if you give him nectar. Diamonds, which are for higher class uh, contractor upgrades. Ambrosia, which are which is for giving to people who don't want nectar anymore because you've given them enough. Basically, you get to a high enough level in their relationship, you got to give them ambrosia instead. And you, you each each ambrosia you give to five of the characters. The first one, similar to nectar, gives you a special item that lets you do a summon, which is a new mechanic that you may not have unlocked yet because you get it pretty late. I'll talk about which characters get, you want to give Ambrosia to when we go out to the courtyard. And finally, Titan Blood, which is for getting new aspects and upgrading them at the weapons. You don't uh, unlock the ability to do this though until after your first Hades victory. Uh, well, oh, also, there would be a me, extra, uh, a, a sixth trade option here, which is a random single time trade that you get every after every run, but I already took this one. Over here is the contractor. Basically, work orders are the only things that have any actual relevance. Everything else here is decorative or auditory. -ive. If that's a word. I don't think it is, but you get the idea. Court music. You use your ears to listen to it. You see, it's a... Anyway. <laughs> Alright, gonna take you through the mirror real quick. First off, I'll show you what I generally use, which is this layout. I'll just leave it on screen here for you. You can pause if you want to look at this after I go through everything. But I'm gonna respec and show you everything about the mirror. So... First, uh, if you don't like how your mirror is set up, you can spend one key to get all your darkness back. My darkness to me. And as you can see, all of my traits are now un unlocked. Uh, next thing to note, something that I didn't know for too long, 
is that you can click these buttons at the side of the traits and everything as a secondary trait that you can use. So there's a little more customization. They are mutually exclusive. You can only have one of these active at a time. Uh, I'm gonna go through all of these traits except for the top four. You start with the top four, but I'll tell you the most important things on this mirror, uh, double dash, AKA greater reflex and two points in death defiance. This is what you should try to get as soon as you can. If you're trying to get your wins in, trying to get that first W, Unlock Double Dash, Unlock Two Death Defiances. This is when I started winning. Uh, first on this mirror though, we got Boiling Blood. Boiling Blood gives you 10% increased damage to enemies that have your cast stuck in them. Or Abyssal Blood, which lowers enemies' speed and damage when they have the cast in them. Boiling Blood has 5 ranks giving 10% each. Abyssal Blood has 5 ranks giving 5% each. So, a total of 50% increased damage or 25% slow and damage down for the enemies. Up next, Infernal Soul or Stygian Soul. Infernal Soul gives you plus one use of your cast, and Stygian Soul gives you plus one, or give, makes your cast regen instead of giving you multiple casts, and it, as you rank it up, it regens faster from five to four to three. Or you can have three total casts plus two. Deep Pockets or Golden Touch. Deep Pockets gives you 10 gold at the start of the run per rank. Golden Touch gives you 5% of your total gold every time you leave a region. 10 ranks of Deep Pockets for a total of 100 gold and 3 ranks of Golden Touch for a total of 15% gold at the end of the floors. Thick Skin or High Confidence. Thick Skin gives you up to 50 max HP, 10 ranks of this. 5 HP at a time. High Confidence gives you increased damage uh, while you're above 80% HP. I think 5 ranks of this for a total of 25% increased damage at high health. Privilege Status or Family Favorite. Privilege Status gives you 20% increased damage versus foes affected by at least 2 status curses. Status curses are things like Doom, Weakness, uh, Knockback... What's the Knockback dot called? Rupture. Rupture, and you know, there's there's a ton. You'll as you start to play, you'll realize there's a lot of these. Or family favorite, which gives you three percent increased damage for each different god you have a boon from. Privilege status goes up to forty percent. Family favorite goes up to six percent per god. Up next, Olympian favor or Olympian legacy. Olympian favor, one percent greater chance for a boon to be rare. Olympian Legacy, 1% greater chance for a boon to be legendary or duo. Olympian Favor, there are, get ready for a lot of clicks here, 40 ranks of, 50 darkness each. Olympian Legacy, there are 15 ranks of. So either 15% greater chance for legendary or a duo, 40% increased chance for rare. Up next, God's Pride or God's Chosen. God's Pride, 1% greater chance for a boon to be epic. I think this is 20%. Yeah, up to 20%. God's Chosen, 1% greater chance for room rewards to be boons, hammers, or pomegranates. And this is 10%. And then finally at the bottom here are the reroll tokens. You either have Faded Authority or Faded Persuasion. Faded Authority lets you reroll the reward for the next chamber. And Faded Persuasion lets you reroll the boon being offered to you from the gods. Or reroll the Well of Charon Choice. So the shop. Not the shop like the actual shop shop, but the shop wells that give you like heal, some darkness, things like that. Uh, important note here, Freighted Persuasion does not work on Daedalus Hammer boons. You cannot uh, use this to fix your Daedalus Hammer to give you something you want. Uh, I should note as well, Faded Authority, I believe, this is something I've been told but cannot say for certain, that this works in a way so that Essentially, if you reroll a god boon, you will always get another god boon. You can't reroll across the line, so you can't reroll like, oop, my next room reward is going to be darkness. You can't turn that into a god boon. That'll turn into some other meta currency. Uh, tips for the mirror. Uh, honestly, the most important thing, like I said, get double dash, get death defiance up to level two. Uh, if you're going for... If you're trying to farm and get yourself some extra meta currency, take Golden Touch and start with the coin purse, which I'll cover in the keepsake section here. 
use that to farm up a bunch of money and buy a extra meta currency from Charon in Act 4. But for high heat, my mirror would probably look something like this. Uh, switch this. I really like Stygian Soul. Probably something like this is what I would play for high heat right here. Alright, that covers the mirror. I'm gonna walk on outside here and we're gonna talk about the keepsakes real quick. Which one? Here in the keepsake section, we got your main, these are your main keepsakes. You will get a keepsake, I think I may have mentioned this, I don't remember anymore. You'll get a keepsake for your first nectar gift to everyone in the game except for Hades. Hades will not give you a keepsake. In terms of what's important in this uh, keepsake bar jar, I would say the best general use trinket in this game is Old Spiked Collar from Cerberus. It gives you a flat 50 life when you rank it up to rank 3. Another thing to note that I should have opened with here is that you have to level up these trinkets by using them. You can see my Sisyphus Shackle here is level 1. You just clear X number of room encounters and then it ranks up to rank 2, and then X number of room encounters it ranks up to rank 3. So you just hold on to it, rank them up as you go. It doesn't take too much time. For general use, if you can't switch your trinkets out though, I would take Old Spiked Collar. 50 max HP, especially early on, is a lot. It's doubling your HP. I think it starts at 25, and even that's a big boost. Other than that, uh, I find a lot of use with the Acorn from Eurydice. I find this to be very good. Like I mentioned in the mirror section, you can take the coin purse to start with a little extra money for farming. And you can take uh, the Broken Spear Point if you like it. I prefer the acorn or the collar, but whichever defensive choice you like. Uh, Skelly's Tooth as well for an extra death defiance is good. And all of these trinkets here, these eight, will let you choose your next god boon. I would highly recommend figuring out which builds you like and utilizing a nectar to make sure that you're able to start your runs with one of these trinkets so that you can start with whatever god you want. So for example, in the run that I think I show footage of later in this episode, I start with the Zeus Thunder Signet so that I can get Chain Lightning on my attacks early on and it sets the tone for the run pretty well. Other than that, uh, the Chaos Egg is pretty nice as well. It's always good. Like, it saves you a bunch of health if you're going into Chaos a lot. And that's more or less it. Down at the bottom here are the Summon Keepsakes. There are five of them. You get these summon keepsakes for the first nectar you give to five different characters. The five different characters are Megara, Thanatos, Sisyphus, Skelly, and Dusa. So if you're looking at who should you be focusing your nectar into after you get all of your keepsakes unlocked, there's your five. Progress your relationship with them, get an Ambrosia in them, you'll get a summon. I pretty much exclusively use the Megara summon. I ranked it up to level five. You rank these up by putting Ambrosia into them. Uh, yeah, I can show you here, right? I have 21. You put two, this goes up. Ranking them up just gives you more uses per run. You can only use them once per room, however, so you can't use, like... I can't use the Megara Trinket five times to just skip the Hydra, unfortunately. But no. Uh, yeah, basically, I just highly recommend the Megara Trinket. It's the easiest one to use. Other than that, we'll go take a look at the weapons real quick. There's one thing I want to point out, which is two of the weapons have a fourth hidden Stays. aspect. That is the sword and the spear. You get the hidden aspect by progressing through the story, interacting with people, and such. You will otherwise just be spending either one Titan's Blood per rank on the base level spear to give it regular upgrades, like uh, the spear gives damage range and speed increased. Or you'll be spending progressively more titan Titan's Blood on the aspects that you unlock. You can unlock aspects after your first victory against Hades. I'm not going to walk you through all of them. Just know that these are the only two that have secret special uh, forms. The other four weapons just have the two forms that you unlock for defeating Hades. Alright, that should do it for this meta section. And on to the boons. Alright, next up is the boons. I'm gonna leave Orpheus humming in the background though, so it's not just dead silence with my voice. Uh, I'm gonna bring up a chart, however, which was made by Reddit user Mikkel for the Hades subreddit. I'll have a link to that post as well as a link to the image itself in the description. 
Uh, what this is mainly meant to show you though, since it's going to be very hard for you to read this because it's a very big thing that you have to scroll in on, is that there are progressions to the boons. You can't just like get any of the boons from any of the gods at any time, right? They're, they're tiered, so you have to have some prerequisites to get later down the tree of the same god. Uh, before I get into what all of the boons do, however, I want to make one minor note, which is that you can only have one god type boon affecting each of your abilities so you, what, what that means is you can only have one boon from any of the characters on your attack one boon on your special on your dash on your cast and on your call so when i refer to the base four or base five that's what i'm talking about if i ever say base four or base five i mean one of the basic boons that affects your uh abilities and not one of the ones that buffs up those effects starting at the top here it is aphrodite there are eight gods here plus hermes is not on this chart but hermes works differently aphrodite her specialty is weak and she also has the highest base damage increase on all of your abilities so like her bonus to attack also has the highest flat damage increase uh on the attack damage. Next up is Artemis. Her specialty is criticals. Criticals are very strong. Like even though Aphrodite has the highest base damage, she's more based around the weakness and making enemies do less damage. Uh, if you're going for damage on a specific attack, I would prefer Artemis for crits because those crits can get to be pretty high if your base damage is pretty high. Uh, next up is Ares. He has two things. He has Doom and Blade Rift. Doom does damage to an enemy after five seconds, and Blade Rift just gets left behind or cast on your dash or from your cast, respectively. And it just does ticking damage in the area very quickly, if you, but it does very low damage. Uh, next up is Athena. Forgot what her name was there for a second. Her specialty is based around deflecting, so... When you take a boon from her, whatever attack or whatever you have that boon on will deflect, which it'll, which means it'll just reflect enemies' projectiles back at them. This can also, it doesn't just work on projectiles, it'll also deflect melee swings if you time it correctly. Uh, Athena is the one that I think the community shits on the most. I think she's the weakest. However, Athena's dash is the best dash in the game. You can't change my mind. Other than that, she also has two abilities that will refresh Death Defiances if you have one of her boons already, which is pretty helpful. Uh, up next is Poseidon. Poseidon is based around knockbacks. Uh, he's alright. Fun with the shield. Um, the thing to note is that Poseidon has two boons, or yeah, two boons that will affect your earned currency. One that gives you more currency rewards, more gold, more darkness and more gems at the end of rooms and one that just gives you gold gems and currency uh, gold gems and money sorry gold gems and darkness there we go third try we got there uh, poseidon is good if you're trying to farm up darkness and you just want to like grind out a bunch take the weapon with the bonus try and get the bonus that gives you more darkness rewards you'll get a lot of money Zeus, uh, he does lightning. Shocking, I know. <laughs> uh, he's good. He does good damage. If you have things that do a lot of hits, getting Zeus to strike lightning is nice. Uh, Demeter does chill. Chill is effectively slow, and her cast is a little crystal beam that shoots out but does not do chill. I, I make a note because her cast is very different than every like anyone else's. Like Poseidon's does knockback. Zeus's does lightning damage. Athena's deflects. The other two crit and do weakness. Ares is, is I talked about, but Demeter's is different as well. And so is Dionysus's. Dionysus's does well. First of all, Dionysus does Hangover, which is essentially this game's version of Poison, and his cast does a big AOE, does a lot of damage, and creates a zone that will stun enemies every half second. Uh, other than other than these eight that are on this chart, there's also Hermes, but Hermes can show up at any time, unlike the other gods. Like he, he'll show up whenever he wants to, essentially, and he just does things that make you faster. Uh, it's always good to pick up Hermes 
period. There's no reason to not go to him. He can give you extra dashes. He can make you move faster. He can make you move faster after dashing. Make your abilities go off faster. Things like that. Uh, I think that's all I have to say for, about, for the boons. Uh, the one other... I know, there's one other thing I want to make sure I note, and that is that... It seems to me, however, I cannot confirm this. I can only just tell you what I've seen from... I think like 90 hours of playing this game at this point if you have say aphrodite on your attack you are significantly less likely to see any other god offer you an attack based boon it can happen and if that does happen you get the option to replace your in initial boon with whichever one the god offered you but it is very uncommon so just expect that when you take a boon in a specific position you're going to commit to it all right, and that should be that for boons. Up next is going to be the types of rooms. All right, up next is the room types. Pretty straightforward. I'll go through them, though, anyway. Starting with your normal rooms. Uh, these are just full of normal enemies. A few basic room things you need to know. You can hit pillars to drop rubble. Enemies can also hit pillars to drop rubble. This isn't a major mechanic, but something to keep an eye out for if you can make it work for you. Uh, there's traps scattered throughout these rooms, don't step on them. There's pre pressure plates, spike traps, bombs, things of that nature. Uh, there will occasionally be, occasionally be wells of Charon scattered throughout as well, which you can use to buy consumables. And uh, you can't fall into or fall off of these maps. However, in Asphodel you can find yourself in lava, which will do, do damage to you that increases over time. Next up are elite rooms. You can tell you're about to go into elite room by the skull on the door. You want to be prepared for these. The upside of these is you get doubled up rewards in the case of normal rewards, and in the case of god boons, you get a higher chance of your god boon being uh, of higher rarity. Elite rooms will typically... There, there's two unique elite rooms you can face per run on each floor. There's two like specific layouts in... Tartarus in Asphodel, it's Hydra Head and Big Stomper or Barge of Death, and in Elysium, it's Asterius or Soul Catcher Room. If you face one of these elite unique rooms, you will not face the other one. So, for example, you can't see the Barge of Death if you see Hydra Head and Big Stomper. Uh, the enemies in elite rooms will always be armored. Even if you have already seen one of the unique elite rooms and you go into another one, the next one will just be a normal room with all armored enemies. After elite rooms, there are well rooms that you can see, which you purchase as an upgrade from the house contractor. These are just free rooms that give you the reward with no combat, and you get a little heal as well. Up next is chaos gates, which are not a whole lot. There's not a whole lot to say. You pay a little health to go in here and you talk to Chaos. Chaos will give you one of three random choices that give you a temporary negative for a permanent buff. These are good as long as you don't take something that's going to kill you, like movement speed down before the Hydra boss, for example. After Chaos, there are Erebus Gates, which are the last ones that I really want to talk about. Erebus Gates are challenge rooms, essentially where you enter through the Erebus Gate to fight a room that is a little bit harder than your normal room, full of more and more and more enemies that spawn over time. And if you can defeat this room without getting hit, you will get a doubled up reward, and you can see what the reward is when entering in. It doesn't cost you anything to get in here. However, you can only enter an Erebus Gate if you are on the corresponding heat. For Floor 1, you have to be on Heat 5. For Floor 2, you have to be on Heat 10. And for Floor 3, you have to be on Heat 15. There is no Erebus Gate spawns in Floor 4, as far as I know. The other thing I want to say, this goes for Chaos Gates and Erebus Gates. If you enter a Chaos Gate or Erebus Gate, you will see that when you leave that gate, you will have different room options for your next room. So for example, if you were offered, say, gems as your potential room reward for your next room, and you go into an Erebus Gate, you will get a different set of three choices from what they were when you on the doors when you went in. So keep this in mind, make sure you're not sacrificing something crucial to your run. 
There's one more room type that I almost forgot because these always slip my mind. There are occasionally, I don't know a whole lot about the number of these that you'll face or such. You, I've seen them anywhere except for floor four. There are survival rooms. So you'll know you're in a survival room. There'll be a little bell toll at the start of the room and the screen will go red. You'll see a little overlay of Hades and he will say something to you and you'll get a little prompt that says survive 45 seconds. Essentially this room is just enemies continuously spawn for the next 45 seconds and at the end they all die and you get your reward. You don't have to kill them all, you just have to live. Uh, for room rewards, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw anything up for this. I'll just leave whatever Useless. gameplay I put up here up here. I'll go through it real quick. You, for from the rooms, you can get max HP, one of the nine god boons, gems, darkness, keys, gold, pomegranates, which are level ups, a Daedalus hammer. There will be two Daedalus hammers throughout the run. In total, you're guaranteed to see two after a certain point. Uh, one of the Three unique guys to the floor, Sisyphus, Eurydice, or uh, question mark, question mark, question mark, dude, who I will not tell you the name of because I do not remember it. And then shop, if you want to call it a room reward as well, it kind of is its own reward. And nectar, which uh, some, some of those are meta currency, some of those are room, uh, run specific. That does it for room rewards. I'm not going to go super, super in depth on room rewards. They're pretty straightforward. You kind of get a hang of them pretty quickly. Up next, I'm going to talk about uh, dashing. Basically, there's a few specific things I want to talk about about dashing, and then into the miscellaneous extras if I have anything left for that. For dashing, I want to show off two things real quick. One of them it only applies if you play mouse and keyboard. That is the difference between dash towards movement versus dash towards cursor. As you can see here, this is what it looks like with dash towards movement on. Just dash whatever direction you're moving. The important thing to note about this is it doesn't you don't have to actually be moving for it. You can dash while shooting as well by just holding down the correct movement keys. The alternative to this, if you prefer it this way, you go into controls here, you press dash at cursor, and you can now dash towards your cursor. This is only really a problem if you're trying to kite with the gun, you have to move your cursor behind you every time you want to dash away, and you're going to spin around like this. So, uh, pick whichever one feels right to you, do you, though, because at the end of the day it doesn't really matter. The other thing is just to illustrate iframes and how I view them. This might not be 100% correct, but when you dash, you have iframes. The way that I look at it is you have iframes for about the first half of the dash, and then at the second half you can be hit by things. Uh, there's no real trick to this, you just gotta play and get a feel for it. Take a few runs, learn when you dash out of the way of enemies, get used to it. It's a really important skill. Uh, I can pretty consistently dodge Hades's big spin with my dash, even with only having two dashes. I think that does it for this guide. If I missed anything, if you have any really great tips that I don't know about, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below, and I'll uh, tell you, hell yeah, dude, thanks for this great tip, because I did not know about this. Thank you for watching, though, for sure. I enjoyed making this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it and I will probably be starting up a just like daily Hades gameplay series working my way up the heat ladder here on the YouTube so stay tuned for that if that interests you and if not oh yeah dude have a good day thanks for being here